Important question to start with, why do you need body armor? I could come up with a lot of reasons for and against, but I simply would say, why not? Don't need it for a zombie apocalypse. Zombies don't use guns. SHTF or break down a society and mobs, you know, storming your property. Maybe you're a first responder or in uniform, and that makes the most sense. Or you simply are like me, and you have a fascination with body armor and the history of armor. Regardless of your interest in getting body armor, nowadays you have a lot to choose from and consider, and cost is a major factor. I came across a deal on some level 3 plus with all the bells and whistles, gloves, elbow pads, knee pads, for around $300. Let's check it out. Now, real quick, if you're not familiar with body armor, there's basically two types. You have soft and hard. Soft is what, you know, most people are familiar with. It's the Kevlar. It's what a lot of our law enforcement wear. It's light. It's comfortable. It's easy to move in. And it stops pretty much all the low-velocity rounds, like pistol rounds. It does have its limitations in that some of the kinetic energy is driven into the target directly behind the impact as much as one to three inches. Now, most people don't know, but this can kill. It's called blunt force trauma. Now, even if soft armor could stop a rifle round, you would be severely injured, incapacitated, or killed simply by the blunt force trauma. Okay, so what am I talking about when I say blunt force trauma? Now, if I had soft body armor, I don't know that I'd want to do this. That would probably, probably hurt. That's the impact, and you know, and a bullet is going to be going a lot harder. With this plate, that dissipates it all over. It's going to push, and it's going to knock me potentially over, but it's not denting in. If I had soft body armor, where this hits, imagine that denting in one to three inches. There goes your sternum, and then you also potentially have contusion to the heart, cardiac tamponade, and all kinds of other issues that are going to seriously ruin your day. Thus, in comes armor plates. Now, this stops high-velocity rounds, dissipates the kinetic energy over a large area, causing little blunt force trauma, if any. Here's something else most folks don't know. It's not the size of the round or the power that defeats the body armor. It's the speed. Real quick, before I forget... If you're looking at what I've got hanging here, this is a review I'm working on, the Ultimate PDW. You'll have to check that out. Anyway, speed is king when it comes to body armor, or I should say defeating body armor, speed is king. Now, most level three has no problem stopping AK rounds or even most of your 308 and slower 223 or 556, but not the typical 223, 556 full metal jacket range ammo most commonly used, and this is usually going at about 3,100 feet a second, and a lot of times that will defeat, depending on the barrel length, typical level 3 armor. And another little known fact is the green tip, or what you know we consider armor piercing round, is actually slower than your typical full metal jacket range ammo, and is usually defeated by level 3. But the typical full metal jacket range ammo will defeat level 3, thus the need for level 3 plus. In my opinion, if you're going to get plate armor, I wouldn't go with anything less than level 3 plus. After all, the most common 223 or 556 round is going to be your full metal jacket, ball ammo, or range ammo, with speeds typically over 3,100 feet a second. Now remember, barrel length is going to have a significant impact on the bullet speed. If I go like a PDW and I've got a 10-inch barrel, I'm going to get slower speeds and it's not going to defeat it. But if I've got a 16, 18, or 20 inch, I may get above that critical 3,100, 32 feet per second, in which case it's going to go right through your typical level three. Now, something else that comes up 
is spall or fragmentation once the round hits that steel plate. This isn't an issue with soft body armor is it absorbs that and you don't have any ricochet or spall, but we already covered the downside of that is going to be the blunt force trauma, which may kill me in itself. Many would argue that steel plates may stop the round, but don't like the steel plates because of the potential for spall. Armor manufacturers have come up with a coating to minimize, to minimize spall, you know, but if you hit steel plates with multiple rounds, because these are multiple hit capacity, you are going to have spall, no matter what, after so many rounds, at least with what's currently being used. Now, you can pay more and get extra coating, and this will slow that down, allowing you to have more repeated hits on target until you get spall. But as you're going to see, there's going to be a limit to that, at least with the current coatings. Now, here's the thing, guys. You are not going to get spall or very little until you have enough hits on target to separate that coating, as you're going to see. You know, so the important question when we're getting into this discussion is how many times you plan on getting hit wearing the same armor in the same general area. You can ponder that for a little bit while we continue on the review. Now, you also notice that companies promote shelf life of their armor, like it's going to go bad. Now, generally, this has to do with regulation and stuff that they, they have to put something on it, kind of like your food products. The steel plates, even though they say you, you know, 10, 15, 20-year shelf life, They've got an unlimited shelf life. Now, some of the polymer and some of those potentially could have breakdown, but really, it's going to be unlimited. The thing is, is they just haven't done the research to stick it on a shelf for 20 years because the technology is new enough with the polymer or the polyethylene, the plastic blends, that they just don't know yet. All right, let's just take a closer look at what I found from RTS. Now, some of you are like me, and the first thing you're going to think of is, you know, I don't plan on going into combat. I really don't need the elbow pads, the knee pads, the gloves. I gotta say, um, they are cool. I feel like I'm I'm ready to go uh, tactical, but yeah, that's not gonna happen. Oh, hey, if you're waiting for me to roll around in the dirt and run from target to target, you're gonna be sadly disappointed. I'm too old for that shit, and it's way too hot. So, fair enough question. I had the same thought. Here's the thing, though. When I went out and did some research on level 3 plus, and then the fact that the RTS has free shipping on the bundle, basically the gloves, the knee pads, and the elbow pads are free. Okay, real quick, I just want to go through what comes in this package. You've got the knee pads, the elbow pads, the gloves, and the vest. Let's just start with the, the vest, and I'll show you some of the features that it has. Okay, so I just want to start with the shoulder straps. These are Velcro. They don't have any buckles, which I really like. I've done some reviews on other ones that have the buckles. And if you do get spall, I have had it sever the buckles and then the vest falls off. I have a feeling this is going to stay on really well. It adjusts super easy. And we just fold that back and it's solid. And then here the cummerbund. Okay, this one does have the ability to put side plates in to adjust the cummerbund. This front part comes up. These come off and you can totally adjust it on the inside. Then we also have the clips as well and those adjust. On the in okay, on the inside, it's designed to help keep air moving. I really like that. Um, it's a good design good mesh and then here is where our plate carrier or our plate goes we've got not just the velcro but that we also have the buckles the snaps and i really like that but then we even go a step further and on the inside okay here's our plate then we also have this which then holds the plate in as well. You just take that and you push it down in and then you mash that Velcro. Line these snaps up. And 
there you go. Same goes for the front plate. Both front and back are the same. On the back side, we open this up and this reveals, gives you a little bit of give in that cummerbund, a little bit of flexibility. And then we have a nice sturdy pole strap. Now, like I said earlier, you know, these are basically just extra when we're looking at overall cost, but they are nice quality. The Velcro, I was just working on my deck the other day, staining it, and I needed um, some knee pads, and I got my old work ones. I was half tempted to put these on and try it, but I was afraid I'd I'd kind of like get them all covered in paint and stuff by the before I got to do the review. They seem really solid. Okay, they are very comfortable. The elbow pads, same thing. We'll put those on, Velcro. And the gloves. Yeah, they're nice gloves. Also have the ability there. I got mine kind of small because I like them tight. So we can adjust that. And then we've got our Velcro strap here. My watch is getting in the way. Nice tight gloves. I like them. Added bonus. Another idea, I'm gonna use my fish scale here. Let's see what we get with that. Coming in at 19 pounds on my fish scale. Okay, so 19 pounds, you know, that's a fair amount of weight. You know, we can get lighter armor that's this level or higher. You can get level four that's like the polyethylene, the plastic that's got um, like Kevlar fibers weaved into it. And then we also have the porcelain in, in various combinations. But the thing is, the cost is going to double and triple. Okay, so this is what I came up with. I didn't get any volunteers. I think this is going to work well. I kind of just threw this together with some scrap wood that I had in the barn. What I've done is I've taken a piece of cardboard and I've slid it back behind here. So if we have penetration, I don't have to take the whole vest off. I can just pull the cardboard out to see if we had penetration. Okay, so what I want to use is, I want to use my Tavor. It's got a 16 inch barrel. We're, oh, maybe, maybe 20 yards here. And I'm going to start off with the green tip. I mean, it should stop it, okay? Because it's going to be slow enough speed. But, you know, this is what everybody thinks of, armor piercing. This is level 3+. plus. I'm going to fire a shot, and then we're going to go check it out. And I'm going to keep firing a single shot at a time to see if we can find out at what point we start getting spall and how much. Let's go take a look. Okay, it was kind of hard to even see where it hit. Got a small hole there. Don't see any fragmentation whatsoever. We'll look uh, on the slow-mo. We'll just pull our thing down here. Nada. Nothing. Okay, I'm not the most patient person. That's going to drive me crazy doing one shot at a time like that, depending on how long it takes. Let's just put uh, three more rounds on it, and then we'll pull it out and take a look. Okay, I was trying to stagger my shots a bit to <laughs> so that they weren't all in the exact same area, but it seems that I'm kind of hitting some of the same spots. Let's just pull out. Yeah, see there one I, I missed. That wasn't plate failure. I missed the plate. Yeah, but that's solid. I don't see anything whatsoever any kind of 
fragmentation coming out. Okay, so this is what I used actually in a video I did a long time ago on level three when I learned about feet per second versus the various levels. And it punched a hole right through on the very first shot. And I thought, oh crap. So let's just load up and do three or four rounds of this. We're actually starting to see some signs of spall. But how many hits did we take? Um, and it's still actually, there's a sharp little piece right there. It's still pretty minimal. Here's gonna be the big question. Not a nice. You know what, let's just take the plate out and take a hey, look. There's under the cummerbund. We can see some bits of lead and stuff. Here's the inside of the front plate. And just in case you're thinking that was an aim high, that was actually above the armor, but nothing, nothing penetrated. Now on the inside, this is what I was talking about initially, is once you get up, you know, actually I'm, I'm surprised um, that it, that it lasted this long. I mean, once you get up six, seven, ten rounds, this is going to separate. This did actually exceptionally well, uh, and the vest shows that. Okay, so here's what the plate looks like after we took it out. These are a lot. I'm thinking, wow, you know, we only hit it three times. No, we hit it more than that. But see, where you hit repeat almost in the exact same spot, that's when you will have some separation and defeating of of the coating not penetration this is actually done really well and see it's still attached and connected so what's happening in this case is rounds that are going through some of the stuff is coming out the bottom this is impressive this is impressive okay so next on the menu this is another Review, I'm working on the Ultimate 308. This is my IWI Galil. It's been SBR'd 308. We're gonna use some basically military ammo, the XM80C. It's pretty much, you know, your standard ball ammo. Let's give that a go. Hey folks, if you're enjoying this review, do you follow my channel? Would you be willing to help support the channel if it costs you nothing, not a zip, zero? Hit that subscribe button. That does as much as anything, so hit that button. I just got a new webpage, home of the crazy stupid deals. You have to check it out. You will be shocked to see some of the deals that I find. You can now subscribe to be notified immediately when I find them. Cost you nothing. I did this for those of you that don't like Facebook. If you do follow Facebook, come check me out and follow me there too. If you ever shop on Amazon, simply go in through my links below in the description. Anything and everything you purchase helps support the channel. Going through my links and it costs you nothing. You can literally buy toilet paper and this helps support the channel. Check out my company picks, the companies I purchase most often from and find most of my crazy stupid deals on. Using these links supports the channel and keeps the reviews coming. While you're there, check out my highly rated online courses. They come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself what folks are saying about them. Bottom line, check out my webpage. Lots of good stuff there, and doing so helps support the channel. Thanks for your support. I couldn't do this without you. Okay. Did well. As you can see, like I was saying, we are now having spall come out the sides. It's actually better than I've seen in the past uh, a lot less this seems to be coming out the bottom yeah it's still not too bad our plates about ready to <laughs> our plates about ready to drop out here let's just pull this baby down not a nothing all right you can see here the cummerbund 
is actually heavy enough that it's really catching a lot of the spall that's coming out the sides here. You know, one of my favorite sayings is go big or go home. Let's see what the old Garan will do to it. Alright, now I don't think anybody can really argue. <laughs> well, there's clearly the 30 out 6 shots and not one single penetration, guys. That is freaking awesome. I love it. Okay, so the 30 out 6 was impressive, you know, big round, and it is moving fast. Now I'm going to get really nasty. Remember I said speed is king? 243. This is the fastest of anything that I've got. We got a PPU 90 grain. I got a long barrel on here. I think it's a 23 or 24 inch hunter barrel. Um, so anyway, we're going to give that a go and see if that penetrates. Quick note, several, several years ago, I bought some AR-500 steel targets and I used this very gun at 100 yards and it punched, with a soft point, punched a hole clean through it. So you can you can immediately see the difference between that and the 556 five, even the 308 holy smokes man that just oh yeah nice nice dang hey real quick i was just editing the video and you could see this massive explosion here but I wanted to point out, we don't see any spall whatsoever coming out the sides. None. Everything, you know, with that slow mo came straight out here. That says a lot, I think, for the coating in the armor. Okay, so that's a 243 hits, you know. When we're using the 223 and other stuff, it took uh, several rounds in close proximity to do that, but that's just showing you the speed. You know, it didn't dent quite as much as the 30 out six, but man. And that was from one that had snuck over the top, but we've got no penetration here, guys. There you have it, guys. Proof's in the pudding. It is what it is. You decide what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun doing it. Until next time, happy shooting. Remember to educate our young people to guns and gun safety. If you haven't checked out my webpage for the crazy stupid deals on ammo and anything else I find, check that out. Till next time, be safe.